Good day everyone, this is Sarah Soriano Batiansala from Section GA, and together with my partner Ms. De Los Santos, we are going to learn and discuss about the Chapter 9, the Campaign for Reforms, which happened in the year 1882 to 1892. So this is the contents of our report. And we are going to explain the nature of the reform movement, name the foremost reformist who went to Spain. We will also identify the aims of La Solidaridad, the role of the pro-Filipino society's play, and explain how masonry helped in the campaign for reforms, and explain why the reform movement failed. So before diving into the topic, let's talk about how did the campaign started. Ten peaceful years elapsed after the execution of the three priests, with who is Gomez, Borgos, and Zamora. It was a peaceful period on the surface because the Filipinos were cowed into silence by the Spanish authorities. There were threats of persecution for those who would oppose or criticize the Spanish rule, and underneath there was discontent not only among the poor Filipino, but also among the educated and well-to-do Filipinos. So, the masses were discontented because of their remained poor and burdened with heavy taxes. And the educated and wealthy were discontented as well because of the abuses of the Spaniards, and because also they were not free to air their complaints, or even allowed to participate in the administration of the government. As a result, the educated and wealthy left for Spain where there was freedom. There, they studied and worked for the introduction of reforms in the Philippines. So, in simple words, because of the unjust execution of three Filipino priests, it led to a new era. So, the reform movement is also called as propaganda movement. It began in the year 1882. It lasted up to the early months of 1892 when the important Filipino reformists returned to the Philippines, like Jose Rizal, who founded the La Liga Filipina. The reform movement which they started included the idea to assimilate the Philippines as a province of Spain. As much as not as a colony of Spain, the Philippines would be presented in the Spanish lawmaking body called the Cortes. So, Filipinos would become Spanish citizens who would enjoy all the rights and privileges by all Spanish citizens. So, they would also be obliged to discharge their duties as Spanish citizens. And as Spanish citizens, the Filipinos could not be treated cruelly by the friars and Spanish civil authorities. And this move to make the Philippines as part of a province of Spain and granting of Spanish citizenship to the Filipinos was called assimilation. Assimilation of the Philippines would allow Indians to be finally called Filipinos. Now let's move on to the great and important Filipino reformists. They are Gashano Lopez Jaina, Jose Rizal, and Marcelo H. Del Pilar. They were the great triumvirate. So, Jose, I mean, Lopez Jaina was the great orator. Rizal was the great thinker and writer. And Del Pilar was the great political analyst. And the other reformists were Jose Maria Panganiban, Antonio Luna, Mariano Ponce, Eduardo Delite, and a few others. They were all young men who went to Europe to study. And in the course of their studies, they involved themselves in the cause of their country. Now let's talk about the life of Graciano Lopez Jaina. Lopez Jaina was born in Haru, now a part of Iloilo City, on December 18, 1856. His parents were Placido Lopez and Maria Jacobo Jaina. He studied at the seminary of Haru to become a priest, but later on, he changed his mind to become a physician instead. He was an observant person, and he saw the injustices, immorality, and greed of the friars and civil officials. He even wrote a long story about a certain friar named Fry Butod, who was very greedy, immoral, and cruel. The story was circulated in Iloilo, 
and soon the friars hated him for it. He went to Manila to escape persecution and to continue his studies, but the Spanish authorities harassed him, which compelled him to secretly sail for Europe in the year 1880. In Spain, he studied medicine, but later on gave it up and devoted his time and energy to writing articles. In the year 1889, he founded the fortnightly newspaper La Solidaridad and became its first editor. According to his editorial, the aims of the newspaper were the following. To fight reaction, to stop all efforts to keep the Philippines a backward country, to extol liberal ideas, and to defend progress. The newspaper became the propaganda arm of the Filipino reformists in Spain. It was written in the Spanish language, and the copies were sent secretly to the Philippines and distributed to educated Filipinos. Lopez Jaina not only wrote articles favorable only to the Filipinos, but also he delivered speeches defending them from the cruel charges of Spanish writers like Pablo Facid and Wenceslao Ipitana, who were anti-Filipino. In all his speeches, he praised the Philippines and called it Pearl of the Orient. In one of his speeches, he called the Philippines a piece of palpitating heart of Spain, and he expressed the demands of Filipino reformists. These demands included the following. First, representation in the Spanish Cortes. Second, the right to vote. Third, freedom of speech, of assembly, and of the press. Fourth, freedom of commerce. Fifth, the removal of the friars from the Philippines because they were an obstacle to progress. Sixth, the education of the Filipino people. Seventh, reforms in the jails of the country. Eighth, the abolition of the diezmos priliades, or the tithe consisting of one-tenth of the produce of the land. But unfortunately, Lopez Jaina suffered from hunger and illness, and on January 20, 1896, he died in Barcelona, Spain. Second reformist, we have Jose Rizal, who was the most brilliant of uh, brilliant Filipinos during his time. Rizal was born in Calamba, Laguna on June 19, 1861. He studied at the Ateneo Municipal and later at University of Santo Tomas. And then he went to Europe to continue his medical studies. He observed early in life how the Spaniards maltreated the Filipinos. He saw how the Spanish authorities ordered his mother to walk from Calamba to the town of Santa Cruz, the capital of the province, because of a false charge made against he by Spanish provincial officials. He saw all the injustices being committed against the Filipinos, and thus his young mind and heart rebelled against them. He swore to work for freedom of his country. And in the year 1882, he went to Spain with the help of his uncle and elder, elder brother, Pashano. There, he studied medicine and several languages, such as French and German. He spent his time wisely. Rizal never gambled. He never spent his money aimlessly. He only bought many books which he read and kept. And at the time when he is 26, he wrote his first novel, No Limitang Here, or in English, Touch Me Not. In this novel, he exposed the defects of the Spanish administration of the Philippines, the greed and immoral immorality of the friars and the superstition of the Filipinos. And then later on, he wrote his second novel, El Filibusterismo, or The Rebel, which was a sequel of the first novel. So in, this, in, in the second novel, Rizal expressed his political ideas and in story form predicted the copy the coming of the revolution. Although very much disappointed in the lack of response by the Spanish government in Spain for their campaign, he did not want the Philippines to have a revolution, because at that time the Filipinos were not yet prepared to fight the Spaniards. He wanted first of all to educate the, the people so that they would know how to discharge their unities correctly and faithfully. Rizal was very brave and courageous. 
his weapon is his pen. He wrote poems, essays, and many articles, all showing his love of country, his patriotism, his love of parents, his happiness, and sorrows. Because of his attacks on the civil and ecclesiastical authorities in the Philippines, the Spaniards hated him and worked for his arrest. They found a concrete basis and opportunity when he returned to the Philippines and founded La Liga Filipina. It is a patriotic society which was suspected of uniting and preparing the people for revolution. He was first banished to the Pitan Zamboanga, but later on, uh, the military court sentenced him to shoot to death. He was executed in Bagumbayan Field, which is now called the Lunita or Rizal Park. He was executed on December 30, 1896. And lastly, we have Marcelo H. del Pilar, whom even his Spanish enemies called him the greatest journalist produced by the purely Filipino race. He was born in Barrio of Kupang, Bulacan, Bulacan on August 30, 1850. He studied at the College of San Jose and then later on at the University of Santo Tomas, where he finished his law studies in the year 1880. And in the same year, he began his campaign against the abuses of the friars and Spanish civil officials. He spoke in meetings, especially in the crowded cockpit, where the common people heard him criticize the friars. In the year 1882, he founded the Tagalog Spanish newspaper namely Diario Tagalog, which, although short-lived, published suggestion on how, how to improve the administration of the country. It was also published mild uh, criticism of the Spaniards. Mild because there was no freedom of the press and speech during the Spanish time. And in the year 1888, the Spanish friars of Bulacan persuaded the Spanish officials of the province to arrest Del Pilar, but his admirers warned him about the order of his arrest, and so he secretly left for Spain. And a year after his arrival in Spain, he became the editor of La Solidaridad. Thereafter, he became its guiding spirit. He not only edited the newspaper La Solidaridad, but he also wrote many articles and editorials. Two of his books in Filipinos is Monastic Sovereignty in the Philippines and the La Frola Frilocracia Filipina or the Frilocracy in the Philippines. Unlike Rizal and other reformists, Del Pilar wrote in the language of masses. He wrote Kaingat Kayo, the Salan at Toksuhan, Kadakilaan ng Diyos, Sagot ng Espanya sa Ibig ng Filipinas, and many others. And these writings are in Tagalog who were, uh, were really enjoyed by the masses. And due to his heavy work and lack of proper food, Del Pilar contracted a disease, tuberculosis. During winter, when it was very cold in Spain, he would pick up a cigarette box on the street of Barcelona and smoke them just to keep him warm. He wanted to return to the Philippines because he believed that the campaign for the reforms was a failure and that it was time to shift to revolutionary action. But unfortunately, he died on July 4, 1896. So good morning once again. This is Heart Angeline Loang de los Santos. So I will be discussing the remaining topics of Chapter 9, the campaign for reforms. So the first topic that I'm going to discuss is the pro-Filipino societies. So the pro-Filipino societies, this is the group of people who are in favor of Filipinos. So the Filipino who went to Spain believed that it was wise for them to seek the help of Spaniards with liberal ideas. So in order to cultivate the friendship and sympathy of the Spaniards, the Filipinos organized 157 societies with members that were sympathetic to the cause of introducing reforms in the Philippines, whether they were Spaniards or Filipinos. So the first society that was formed is named Circulo Hispano Filipino or the Spanish Filipino Circle. 
So it was organized in 1882, which aimed to voice out the concerns of the Filipino. They also published a newspaper called Revesta del Circulo Hispano-Filipino, or the Journal of the Spanish-Filipino Circle. So the purpose of this newspaper was to bring to the attention of the Spanish authorities in the conditions in the Philippines and to work for the introduction of reforms which would benefit the Filipinos. So this newspaper aimed in expressing, expressing thoughts about the abusive Spanish government to those people who were imprisoned for fighting against the Spaniards in 1872. But unfortunately, this newspaper and the society did not last long. So the Circulo Hispano Filipino and Revesta del Circulo Hispano Filipino died a natural death because of lack of financial support and conflicting political issues and most of all, lack of membership. Because the Circulo Hispano-Filipino or the Spanish-Filipino Circle did not succeed, they created another society. So it is called the Association Hispano-Filipina. So the Association Hispano-Filipina was inaugurated in 1889 and founded with patriotic aims. The primary aim was to push forward reforms that could improve the living conditions in the Philippines during the Spanish colonial era. So the association was formed as reformists realized that putting up an organization would, would mean pulling off their resources and efforts in the campaign to have their voices heard by Spanish government. So the association's... Hispano-Filipinas' aspiration was to work for the material and moral improvement of the Philippines, which consists of six aims. So the first aim of Association Hispano-Filipina was the abolition of the diezmos prediales and the sanctorum. So these two are form of taxes. So, diezmos prediales is a kind of tax that was compromised of one-tenth of the produced of the land, while sanctorum is a form of tribute or tax which was raised to accommodate the needs of the Catholic Church. So, the Association Hispano-Filipina wanted to end this kind of tax. Second is the compulsory teaching of Spanish in all schools in the Philippines. Third is the radical reform in the University of Santo Tomas. Fourth is the abolition of flagging as a form of punishment. So they also wanted to end the flagging. So when we thought so when we talk about flagging, this is what we called whipping or canning. A bit a beating administered with a whip or rood, with blows commonly directed to the person's back. So it was imposed as a form of judicial punishment. The fifth, the fifth aim was the establishment of agricultural banks. And last is the stack and other reforms so all of these aims were benefit were to benefit the filipinos the society lived longer compared to the circulo hispano filipino but it never realized its goals because the spanish high officials in spain were too busy with state problems to even mind and solve the problems of the colony So this is what the pro-Filipino society is all about. So let's move on to the next topic, which is the Freemasonry and its role. So when we talk about Freemasonry, it refers to the fraternal organizations that trace their origin to the local guilds of stonemasons that from the end that form from the end of the 13th century 
regulated the qualifications of stone masons and their interaction with authorities and clients. So when we talk about stone masons, it is the creation of buildings, structures, and sculpture using stones as the primary primary material. So during the last two decades of 19th century, Freemasonry or Masonry was popular in Europe and in Spain. So the Filipino reformists during this time were Rizal, Lopez Jaina, Del Pilar, Antonio Luna, and others. So they joined Masonry not only because they wanted to win friends among the Spanish Masons, but also because of its anti-friars character. Because during that time, friars are abusive of their power and influence. So when we talk about friars, a friar belongs to a religious order, a group within the Catholic Church. They are devoted, devoted to a religious life and live and work among regular people in society. But the friars hated masonry because it provided an inspiration to the Filipinos who were questioning the right to remain in the Philippines. So Lopez Jaina, as what I have mentioned earlier, Lopez Jaina was one of the Filipino reformists. So he is very active in masonry and thought of bringing all Filipino masons when he founded the lodge. A lodge is a private lodge or constituent lodge, the basic organizational unit of Freemasonry. It is also commonly used as a term for a building in which such a unit meets. So the lodge that Lopez Jaina found is called Revolution in Barcelona in 1889. So this lodge was exclusively for and by Filipino. So other years pass when Lodge Revolution was dissolved. So all its members were taken in as members of a new lodge that was founded in Madrid. And this lodge is called the La Solidaridad. So La Solidaridad was established to express the goal of the propaganda movement towards achieving assimilation with Spain. So the unity among Filipinos in Spain was maintained by this Masonic Lodge. In time, Filipino Masons thought to establish Lodge in the Philippines. As a result of this, in early 1891, those Filipinos who had been to Spain met and decided to establish the Maunic Lodge Nilod in Manila. The Masons in the Philippines, mostly coming from Manila and surrounding areas, expressed the following aims of organization. So the first aim was to work for freedom and prosperity of the Philippines. Second, to work for the government. Third, to ask for representation in the Spanish Cortes. And last, or the fourth aim, was to establish the 159 Philippines as a province of Spain. So all of these were, were also the aims of the Filipino reformists in Spain. So the Filipino Mansons therefore merely expressed their program in the Philippines in accordance with the official stand of the reformists in Spain. So Mansari became popular in the Philippines and as a result of this, in May 1893, there were already 35 Masonic lodges that were established in the country and nine of it was located in Manila. So the popularity that, Mansor, that Mansori continued and enjoyed in the Philippines and was shown by the fact that even the Filipino women founded their own Masonic Lodge. So this lodge was named Walana. The prominent women behind these Masons included Rizal's sisters, Josefena and Trinidad, Rosario Villaruel, Marina Dizon, Valeriana Legaspi, Romualda Lanuza, Sixta Fajardo, and Purificacion Deva. 
So, the Walana or the, Mans, the Masons were anti-friars and they wanted the friars to be shipped back to Spain. So, it can be said that practically all, if not all, members of the reform movement were Mason. So, this is what the Freemasonry and its role all about. So, next topic will be the La Liga Filipina. So, the La Liga Filipina, in 1892, Rizal returned to the Philippines. So, he prepared a constitution of a society. Soon after his return to Manila, he proposed the establishment of a civic society. So, in July 3, 1892, Rizal and a group of patriotic Filipinos, including Andres Bonifacio, founded the society and named it La Liga Filipina. So, the purpose of La Liga Filipina was to build a new group that sought to involve the people, the people directly in the reform movement and it also aims to unite the whole archipelago into the society with equality for Filipinos and Spaniards in the Philippines. So, the society was composed of five aims to be governed by Supreme Council, a Provincial Council, and a Popular Council. The aim of the La Liga according to its constitution were to unite the whole archipelago into one strong body. Next, to give mutual protection of all members in case of necessity. Third, to encourage agricultural commerce, and education. Fourth, to end members against any kind of violence and injustice. And fifth, to study and apply reforms. So in addition, members of the society were to pay a monthly due of 10 centavos. So the purpose of this Money or the society's money was to support member or his son without financial means but with enough ability and industry. Second, to support the poor against the rich and the powerful. Third, to give financial help to any members who suffered losses. Fourth, to open stores and shops which would sell goods to members at low prices. Lastly, to introduce machines in order to promote industries. So, these are the officers of the La Liga Filipina. So, their president was Ambrosio Salvador. The fiscal was Agustin de la Rosa. The treasurer was Bonifacio Arivalo. And the secretary was Diodato Arellano. So, the society or the La Liga Filipina was civic in nature and that was seen by the Spanish authorities. So, Spanish authorities were threatened and they considered it dangerous because they saw in La Liga Filipina an organization that is capable of uniting the Filipinos for self-sufficiency and defense. So, to stop this, the Governor General ordered the arrest of Rizal the night of July 6. So he was detained in Fort Santiago pending deportation to the Pitan Sambuanga. As a consequence of his arrest, the La Liga Filipina died a natural death. The society or the organization became inactive and it did not succeed in its pursuit of reforms because the colonial government did not agree to any of its demands. So, some patriotic members of La Liga Filipina tried to revive it. But they failed to do so because the members quarreled among themselves. Some of the members of the La Liga Filipina founded another patriotic society. And this is the Querpo de Compromisorios, or the body of the compromiser, which pledged to continue supporting the La Solidaridad. But this too 
did not last long. So in general, all the patriotic societies that were founded for the 161 purpose of making four reforms did not last very long. So in short, they all failed in their mission. So this is what the La Liga Filipina all about. So next, let us move on to our last topic which is why the reform movement failed so the campaign to introduce reforms wages by patriotic filipinos in the spain and in the philippines failed and it is true that some of laws beneficial to the philippines were passed and one of these laws in the is the maura law of 18, 1893 so maura law pro- provided for the reorganization of the local local government, the compulsory teaching of Spanish in all schools, and the, intru- the and introducing reforms in the judiciary. However, these laws were not implemented. So it was passed, but it was not implemented. So therefore, it is considered as the Laws. So why did the reform movement fail? So there are four reasons explain why the reform movement failed. So first, Spanish high officials were too busy with their own problems to listen to the collective voice of the reformists. So they don't have enough, so they don't have that much time to give more important nor listen to the problems and the collective voices of the reformist so second the reformist in spain and in the philippines did not have the necessary financial means with which to make their campaign effective so funds were particularly difficult during this time to get because most of the patriotic filipinos which is a member of a specific society that does not have enough money or had no money to finance such a big pro- project. So third, the reformists themselves were not united. So there were jealous- jealousies among them. The unity of the Filipinos in Spain was endangered by the rivalry for leadership between Rizal and Del Pilar. So there were other quarrels which were not good for the cause of the Filipinos. And lastly, the friars in the Philippines had influential friends and supporters in Spain, which opposed to the introduction of the reforms in the Philippines. So against the rich and powerful friars, the Filipino reformists could not do 162 much to obtain the goals that would make the colony a province of Spain. So with equal rights as enjoyed by the Spanish. So these are the reasons why the reform movement failed. So thank you so much for listening. This is where our report ends. I hope that you have learned something from it. So once again, this is Heart Angeline Laang de los Santos, and in behalf of Miss Sarah Bachensela, we are the reporter of Chapter 9, the Campaign for Reform Movement. Thank you so much and stay healthy everyone. Goodbye!